Hey, JP, how's it going? Hey, Brent, how are you? Good, thank you. Uh, I'm not sure if the how live the reps were uh, on special teams, but curious just to get your thoughts on on the performance of punters and, and kickers and how those guys did today. Uh, you know, I, I thought really that the special teams work that we got today was really very good. Uh, we went competitive reps um, in in a punt period uh, where we were trying to um, get some different looks, work our punt scheme. Uh, each unit, the first group and the second group, each got, um, I think, Overall, I think they got six total reps um, with each one of those units. And then uh, we had we had live, all, all our field goals were live today. Uh, so we got good good work in terms of our protection, good work in terms of, of the block unit. And I really thought our kickers had a pretty good day. Um, you know, I don't have the stat sheet in front of me, but um, it, they, you know, I think overall they, they had a really good day. Um, and, and the competition this week has been really good. Last week, uh, you know, starting from last Saturday scrimmage, if you, if you take the block kick out of it, which is which is a great thing for our pride unit, I don't think it had much to do with the kick itself. Um, our kickers didn't miss a live kick this whole week, um, so that was that was definitely a positive. Uh, I know we we uh, missed a couple today, but I think overall the, the work was really solid. Next will be our show phone from more chat. Hey, on the on the return um, groups, I mean we talked a lot about punt returner because. Um, Mike is not available, but um, how many different guys are getting looks at kick returns and are you doing any of that live at all or no? We haven't gotten there yet. Uh, when we get to the back half of, of spring, which uh, we'll be starting um, you know, next week and then right after uh, Easter, we'll start working kickoff return as a unit uh, as opposed to just the fundamentals that, that go along with kickoff return. Uh, so once, once we get into that, we'll do some more uh, competitive work in terms of a full kickoff return. Um, but really, for us, the way we build our spring, it's it's all fundamentally structured. Um, a lot of, of competitive situations that we put guys in. Uh, we don't really get into full unit schemes until the end of spring. Uh, and that's really just to, to get them exposed a little bit to the scheme before we get into the summer and fall camp. Um, but that will start, uh, some units will start this coming week and other units will start uh, the following week. The SM Casa from the Tallahassee Democrat. Yeah, Coach, um, on Thursday, Patrick Payton had a block on a field goal attempt. As a special teams coach, when you're watching that, what's your reaction like? Are you kind of excited for the, the block or are you kind of like, this is what we got to fix? Like, what's your immediate reaction when something like that happens? And that's a great question. Uh, it, it's definitely mixed feelings. I'm excited about the block um, because, you know, when, if you have the opportunity to block kicks, uh, you can change games. And a guy like Patrick Payton, uh, with his length, if he can get good penetration on his initial get off and he can get his, his arms up, which he was able to do, uh, he's just so long uh, that, that he can really impact games that way. So I love to see that, uh, you know, because I, I, I really, we all know here how, how that affected games a year ago. Um, and, and so I want to build on that, that, that you can go block kicks. Uh, and then on the flip side of it, obviously it's something we got to, to get fixed, but uh, one thing I, I am very confident about, and, and a lot of it's in how we practice, um, you know, we do a lot of live field goal work. And, um, you know, that that makes both sides better. It makes our protection better, and it makes our, our uh, field goal block unit better. And, um, you know, so so I know that, that at, having that opportunity to coach the field goal unit after the block is as valuable as anything. Because when you just kind of go two steps and stop, like, I know some people probably practice. It doesn't, that never exposes where your weaknesses are. So we know exactly where we need to, to get better. And uh, Pat coming through and blocking it just was an opportunity to show that. This will be Aslan Harvard Andy from Warchamp. Hey, Coach, you know, with, with Derek's departure, it seems like, you know, Byron Turner saw maybe a little bit more opportunity at, at practice on Tuesday and Thursday. How have you seen him kind of maybe respond? Has there been extra sort of workload on his shoulders moving forward here? Yeah, you know, so uh, Byron, you know, is taking advantage of his opportunity. I think he's probably had his best, and I'm going to include today in it, uh, his best three days in a row that that he's had since he's been here. Um, you know, he's where I've been impressed is he's been really uh, solid fundamentally, and his execution of the scheme has been on point. Uh, so, so I've I've been really pleased with with his progress. You know, he's a guy that you know really through his first couple of years here battled some injuries, so he didn't have the accumulated reps that that maybe some other guys have, have had an opportunity to get. And uh, 
he, he's he's looked really good over the course of last week. This question will be Matt Marshall from the Orlando Central. Hey, JP, we spoke to Adam just a little bit ago, and he mentioned this idea of having the depth at linebacker kind of helps the, the kicking and return game and, and things like that. I want to get your thoughts kind of on, on what you've seen from the depth from that position and how it's helped the, the return game for you guys once you once you guys get going on it. Yeah, you know, so I think probably as, as football has is, is kind of changed a little bit um, in terms of just how offenses are and, and, and defenses recruit to, to fit against what they see offensively. Um, you know, the big skill positions, the tight ends, the linebackers, you know, what used to be the fullbacks, the bigger safeties, you know, those are those are at such a premium because you don't carry as many of them on your roster as you used to. You know, when when teams, when offenses used to be more two-back teams or or bigger personnel groupings, there was a, a ton of tight ends, fullbacks, linebackers, bigger safeties that were on your roster. You don't really build your roster like that anymore. So those big skill bodies that you need uh, to, to play on those special teams units, there's there's fewer of them. But when you have good linebacker depth like we've been able to, to, to have here now and, and create, uh, that certainly helps because I need as many big skill bodies as I possibly can. You know, we have a, a, a lot of DBs and wideouts and skill bodies running around. But to have those big skill bodies, uh, that's critical in terms of, of how you build your special teams and the depth that you need within it. Go back to Ira. When you guys are working on some of the pass rushing stuff at practice, uh, it seems like Pat is doing a lot of not just relying on his speed. I mean, like he's kind of challenging guys, kind of bull rushing. Is that something you guys tell them in those reps, this is what we want you to work on, or is that something he's desires to work on? Uh, you know, I think both. You know, what, what I asked of those guys in, in the pass rush reps uh, when we do the one-on-one -on -one pass rush is to do things that are necessary for you to become a complete player that you're uncomfortable with. You know, Pat is is a speed first, and that's where he his rush is generated. Well, for him to become a complete player, you have to have the ability to translate that into from, sometimes from speed to power. So it, practice it. Like, that's the only way you're going to get better at it. On the flip side, with like Jared Burst, you know, he's a physical, more of a power rusher. You know, I, I try to challenge him in those uh, pass rush one-on-one uh, -on -one drills Try to do something different. I know you can power rush. We, you know, that's your strength. You know, now, now work on working more of an edge and see if you can bring that versatility to your game. So, you know, constantly, it's, it, you're always looking for ways to to become a more complete player uh, without ever drifting too far away from what your your strengths are. Because um, I don't want them to change their game. I just want them to add more tools to their repertoire. Okay, Aslan. Uh Coach Fuller was asked about like what receiver has been giving them kind of problems on defense. And he mentioned Kentron was a guy that's played really well. And he, he said it kind of started from the way he's been performing on special teams as the guy who's responsible for that. And obviously such a big part of what coach Norvell wants to do when a guy is sold out and invests in special teams and it pays off on his side of the ball. I mean, I guess how fulfilling is that? And is that like a teaching tape moment that you show to the younger guys to, to prove to, you know, be focused on the details on special teams? Yeah, you know, Kendron, I think, is a, is a perfect example of, uh, you know, how Coach Marvell builds uh, the culture of this program. Uh, he he has improved every year, like, dramatically in terms of how he's performed on all of the special teams phases. And I don't think it's a coincidence that you also see his production and his play at wideout kind of improving at the same, the same uh, pace. And, and it's and it's not necessarily because um, I just think it's the way he's invested in everything. You know, I I I think it's it's I, I think a reflection of it is how he does in the special teams. But you see him in every part of his game just growing and, and getting better. And and uh, you know, I think that you know from Coach Fuller's answer, Tron is a great candidate to say you know who's the guy that gives you a lot of trouble because he always seems to show up. Go back to Matt Marshall. JP, you guys have had obviously some success on, on the ends when it comes to the transfer portal with Jermaine and, and Jared. How much of, of that is, is analytical research? How much of that is gut feeling? I mean, how, what's kind of involved in assessing some of those guys? Um, 
you know, I, I think, uh, you know, with Pierre, with uh, Jermaine, with Jared, um, you know, there, it was twofold. Um, one, obviously, their, their play spoke for themselves. Um, you know, they all, they have different skill sets, all three of those guys that I mentioned. Um, and then I can add Gilbert to that, but uh, they all had that physical traits that we like on, on tape. But when we got to know them, they also fit what we're trying to do here from a culture standpoint. Um, Jermaine, Pierre, Burse, those three guys came in and they're as hardworking as anybody on, on the team. Um, they're tough, they're accountable, they're, they do what they're asked to do and they, they handle their business like a, like a pro. Um, and those are the type of guys, I think that's what we've had success with in big picture in the transfer portal um, is because that, it's not just the physical skill set, it's also the fit. And we do, we do uh, a thorough evaluation in terms of the physical, but you also have to have the right fit in terms of how they're going to fit into the team because this is a different day and age. The, the team dynamic has now shifted a little bit because we didn't used to have the opportunity to get guys come in who are older or more veteran. Um, and now we have that, but you can't, you don't want to ever ruin uh, the team dynamic. So whoever you add to the mix is going to change the team a little bit. So you got to be um, really careful and really thorough and really smart in terms of who you add and, and how you do it. All right, we're going to go two more. Next will be Brendan. Earlier when we were talking to Coach Norvell, he mentioned Jaden Jones as someone who can be an X factor when he's able to, to, to go 100%. And granted, we probably won't see him this spring, but when, when we do get a chance to see him, I guess, what can we expect from him? And what have you seen from Jaden just kind of how he's handled his rehab process and getting ready for whenever that, that time comes for him? Well, the thing I would appreciate about Jaden is we talk about maximizing your opportunity, and that's all relative to the situation that you're in at that moment. Um, you know, he can't do a lot of the physical right now on the field, but what he can control are how he how he's handled his nutrition, how he's handled his rehab, how he's handled the weight room, and he's put on some really good weight. Um, he's doing a great job in terms of gaining some muscle mass. Uh, he's he's getting after it in terms of, of his rehab. And he's really attacking the meeting room uh, in, a, in, a, in a way that uh, I'm proud of him for. Just He's not going to get the reps right now. But the questions he asks, uh, he'll send me film clips uh, on his phone of things that other guys did at practice. And, you know, he's asking what they could have done better, how I would have coached it different. And so he, you can see he's really invested in learning. So when his opportunity does arrive, that he's prepared for the moment. Last one will be Ira. Hey, you know, it just dawned on me that um, Tyler is learning a new, um, a new, he's got a new operation, you know, like the, I think we've, I've just been thinking that those guys are back from last year, but but they're new for him. Has that been a challenge for him at all? And, and are you seeing him get more comfortable? No, no, Tyler's comfortable. Um, I think, I think for two reasons, one of those guys put in a lot of work on their own uh, in January and February, like Tyler didn't wait till spring ball to, to really kind of get, get going. So I think the work they put in uh, in January, February, absolutely is starting is showing up and paying off, but also his demeanor. Like he's a very low maintenance specialist. He, you know, he kind of, he has a little bit of a swagger to him that I don't think he cares who's snapping or holding it. He's going to kick it. Um, and, I, and I appreciate that about him um, because it is such a technical position. Um, he's kind of got that, that little bit of, I'll make it. I don't, I don't care who's holding it. And uh, um, I think that that's, that shows up in how he plays the game. All right. Thank you. Thank you guys. Recording stopped.